What's going on Halo fans, Luke the Notable here. In this video, we're going to find out what if rec points were like actual currency. More specifically, what if you could sell rec points between players? This idea isn't horribly outlandish. There are plenty of mainstream games right now like World of Warcraft and RuneScape where their in-game currencies are sold online on sketchy websites. What I'm going to be answering in this video is what would happen if rec points were sellable between players? What if you could grind all day for rec points and then sell them online in the black market. First off, we would have to establish some ground rules and we would have to set how much a rec point would be worth. Currently, a gold rec pack costs 10,000 rec points, or if you want to take the easy way out and spend real money, 299. If we go by those numbers, the value of one single rec point would be $0.000299. The question I wanted to answer is how much Halo would you have to play at this level in order to drop out of school and just become a full-time video gamer? If you were to play Warzone Assault, you could average around 7,000 rec points per hour, bringing your total dollar amount to 209 per hour. If you were to grab 11 other friends, go into Warzone, and try to win those games as fast as possible, called triple capping, you would get around 8,500 rec points per hour, bringing your total dollar amount to $259 per hour. Currently, the best and most consistent solo queue method for getting XP and rec points is playing Warzone Firefight Mythic. Right now, you can get about 8,500 rec points per hour with a 20% win-loss ratio if you're playing Warzone Firefight Mythic, and that number jumps up to 10,000 rec points an hour if you can win every single one of your games. But even if you boasted that 100% win ratio in Warzone Firefight Mythic, you would still only make about $2.99 an hour, and that's really only enough to buy one gold pack. In the United States right now, federal minimum wage is about $7.25, so many of these methods would not be enough to get you a stable job. If you worked 40 hours a week at federal minimum wage, you would make around $290 a week. In order to make that much money playing Halo, you would have to work about 13 and a half hours per day, and that's every single day, 365 days a year, and that would only be to make federal minimum wage. So basically, I've killed your dreams. You'll never be able to play video games for money. Alright guys, that's the end of the video. Stay notable. See you in the next one. Just kidding! I have decided to do the math and figure out what you would need to do to make at least minimum wage from playing video games, but do it the easy way. I said before that a lot of popular games right now, like RuneScape and, and World of Warcraft, if you've played any of those, have sketchy sites that sell in-game currency for premium costs. Generally, all of that in-game currency is not generated by people, it's generated by bots. Essentially, a computer program that runs the game for you. This way, one individual can control many accounts farming for gold or whatever the currency is, it could be rec points, making a ton of money off these games. Now, unfortunately, in Halo 5 right now, it'd be pretty hard to make a computer program that could play the game for you, but there are some ways that you can boost the game and be very AFK. I do want to give a disclaimer here. The method you're about to see for earning XP and rec points completely AFK is not a good method at all. First off, it's morally wrong because it hurts your team every single time that you do this, so just don't do it on that basis alone. Secondly, this method is terrible. You're gonna get XP and rec points, but the rate will be so incredibly low that it's almost not worth it. Just play the game if you want to rank up. That being said, I do have footage of me using these cheesy methods, but I only did this so I could get information on how to make this very interesting and cool video. I needed to do it a couple times so I could get averages. I didn't want to just do it once and say this is the only way it would work. Just please don't dislike the video or, you know, tell people that I'm awful and I cheated the game because I really was just doing this for you guys. The method entails going into Breakout or any other Breakout type minigame. Uh, right now, Extermination is live as a social playlist and you can do that in this and that's what I ended up doing it in because it's a social playlist and people won't get as mad when I do it. But basically, all you have to do is tape your controller so you're moving forward always and you can't and if you want, tape down your right trigger so you're shooting to make it easier for the enemies to spot you. Again, this is totally hypothetical. I'm not telling you this so you can go do it. I'm just telling you how it would work if you wanted to basically gold farm. On average, you'll get about 2,700 XP per hour when you're doing this, and you'll get about 1,200 rec points an hour while doing this. Compare that to Warzone Assault, which gives you 7,000 rec points an hour, and you can see that this method is not only immoral, but also, like, terrible. 
Also keep in mind that these numbers take into account the fact that one time I did get kicked for inactivity. Just because you're moving or shooting doesn't mean that you won't get kicked. After I made that Timmy video showing how it was very easy to get the Timmy helmet just by AFKing, I think 343 patched the way that this works. Anyway, using this method and assuming that rec points were a real currency that you could sell on the black market, using this method, you could get about 35 cents an hour. That doesn't seem like much, but again, we're going for bulk here. We're farming. And in order to get to that 725 mark that we wanted to get to before, we would have to have 21 accounts all doing this simultaneously. This would mean that we would have to buy 21 X boxes, we would have to buy 21 copies of Halo 5, 21 Xbox Live Gold subscriptions, and 21 TVs to play these on. Currently, you can buy the Xbox One S plus Halo 5 for about $260. I'm sure there's a much cheaper option, but I didn't care enough to look at one because no one's actually going to do this. But 21 Xbox One S's would cost you $5,460. You'd also need Xbox Live. 21 gold cards that lasted a year would cost you $1,260. And unfortunately, you would need to buy some TVs. I found a 720p 19-inch TV for 70 bucks. I'm, again, I'm sure you could find cheaper ones, but, you know, who cares? And buying all those crappy TVs would cost you $1,470. Add it all up, and you get a startup cost of $8,190. And this of course doesn't even take into account the space you would need, the amount of power strips and extension cords that you would need, and even the power that you would have to pay for to get all these things running. But even thinking about calculating that kind of makes my head hurt, and if any of you are seriously considering trying this, just remember that this is all hypothetical. This method would be the best for one single person because you could just set up all of the Xboxes and all you would have to do is make sure that none of them got banned or kicked from games. You could sit on your butt and relax and just check out all 21 of your crappy TVs and make sure that all of your accounts are working. And because having 21 accounts all running simultaneously using the cheesy strategy that I talked about before would make you 725 an hour, you could technically just sit in your apartment for 8 hours 5 days out of the week and work a 40 hour week. This would mean that you would still have the weekends to hang out with your girlfriend that definitely doesn't exist. Outside of having 21 working Xboxes in your apartment, you would have a pretty normal life. And hey, you would even make $15,000 a year. That's not amazing, but it's also nothing to laugh at, especially if you're just sitting on your ass all day. Now you still would have to save up all that money, that $8,000 in order to get this setup going, and I never even talked about all the power consumption that you would have to pay for, but still, $15,000 for sitting on your button looking at 21 screens ain't too bad. And the money only goes up the lower your quality of life goes. If you worked 12 hours a day, 7 days a week doing the same method with the same amount of accounts, you could get almost $31,000 a year. Plenty of time to call your mom on the phone and have her tell you what a disappointment you are. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I love doing these kind of weird math videos. They're, they're probably my favorite to do on this channel. Please comment down below with your thoughts on the video. I love reading comments. It's easily one of my favorite parts about YouTube. And please subscribe. I do tons of videos like this. If you've never seen them before, you'll definitely be entertained. Again, thank you all for watching. Please stay notable, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.